little quick raw cell phone video on here how the uh, FLIR Duo Pro works and how you control it. Um, right now I have it, the FLIR Duo Pro on the M600 connected via HDMI. Um, and it's coming through the Lightbridge 2 system as you can see here. Uh, that sends your picture, um, and it, but it doesn't, you don't have control of it like you, you, as you can see, there's no camera controls here. There are no controls uh, as similar to what you would have on the XT. Um, so what I wanted to show you now, uh, I know uh, there's been other videos out there that have shown uh, how you can control it with a secondary remote controller. Um, I think there's going to you're going to see other options coming as well uh, for that. But uh, what I want to show you is the app part of this, which is the Bluetooth app. So what you'll see is that these things connect. Um, it connects via Bluetooth uh, to the system, and it can run on either a tablet or your cell phone or whatever you want it to run on. Now, once it's connected via Bluetooth, you turn this thing on, and uh, what you'll see here is kind of your home screen, if you will. And up here you'll see you have your picture-in-picture -picture mode, and again, that's what we have it in here. Um, we can change that to all IR, as you see up here. We can change it to all visible. So there's your optical camera there, and then we can switch it to picture-in-picture. -picture. Now one of the things that I've uh, asked FLIR to do, hopefully they will uh, take my recommendation, is the ability to swap the picture-in-picture -picture so your primary is your thermal and your picture in picture is your electro optical so we'll see if they do that uh, next thing you have down here is your scene and that's the stuff uh, if you're familiar with thermals uh, this is all just kind of a uh, standard stuff as far as uh, your different default options here but then you can also tune it and anybody that's familiar with the xt will be familiar with all that if not uh, i'm not going to go through all of that on here but you'll learn it this is basically how you can tune your thermal imager if you will for um, what it's presenting to you on the display um, so the as you'd expect you also have the palette and this is where you can switch so if i switch to black hot you'll see here i'll switch it back to fusion and then we have that and so on and so forth right and things like this and so i'm gonna switch back to fusion and then um we have MSX. Now, MSX is a nice technology for those that aren't familiar with it. It basically takes your electro-optical, your, your regular visual spectrum, and it finds all the edges in there and then overlays them onto the thermal. So um, I'll see if I can't show you that on here real quick. I'm going to switch to uh, IR to kind of make it bigger, uh, the display bigger there, and then I'm going to switch on my MSX, and then I'm going to go and go ahead and pull it back. To where you'll see it'll, look, it'll kind of like look what you would get like with a regular thermal of the XT. So you get your basically your thermal image there, but um, and it's it's nice you can see it all, but you know some of the edges aren't quite there, and it, sometimes it's kind of hard to really distinguish what you're looking at. You turn that MSX on now, you'll see um, how it actually highlights around all the edges and on the roads. And I've even got to where you write something on the wall, and you can actually read the writing on the wall. So definitely a nice feature. Um, I do like that. Um, and then of course the flat field correction over here. Uh, anybody that's familiar with using a FLIR thermal imager knows what that is. And uh, basically you do that anytime things are getting a little noisy in your thermal image. Um, you hit it, you won't be able to see anything because this is uh, uh, stationary right now. So also on the MSX you have a horizontal, horizontal vertical alignment. So you can align the, the picture alignment if, it's, if it does seem to be a little off or something, which is nice. It gives the user a lot of control. Um, so the other thing that we have is we have IR zoom and visible zoom. So this allows you to control, these are a digital zoom, but it allows you to control the zoom of each one. Now this is a 336 unit, so it'll only allow me up to 400 zoom. And you can see here it zoomed out on the street and you also you see the MSX technology zooms in right with it, which is nice. Okay, so there's one, there's a no zoom. And we can zoom in and zoom out. All right, the other thing we have is we have the visible or electro optical zoom, and that's going to be over here in the regular optics. 
So you'll be able to, you can zoom in there, zoom in more. And this one goes all the way up to 8x zoom. Um, does it get a little bit grainy? Yeah, a little bit, you know, and maybe not so great for inspectors or something like that. But you know what, for, for police officers and stuff, uh, you could still definitely make out all the details you needed on a, on a suspect or on fire if you needed to go in and see the details of that. So definitely good for public safety. Now for the guys that are doing thermography, um, you have some of your settings down here, of course, your your conditions um, for, for all of your um, settings to make your thermography more accurate, right, and your emissivity and everything else. Uh, down here you have a the video, you have a single picture image capture, and then you have multiple with, and then on your multiple, of course, you can set your interval for every second or what have you. Now that's how you, if you wanted to do some mapping, which I plan to do a little demo on mapping and probably tomorrow, and see how that turns out. Uh, but that's how you can do that. So, um, so after that, you also have you also notice you have these up here. Those are your channels and how you configure them to your channel, the channels, um, like to switches on, on a secondary remote controller or any kind of a transmitter uh, that will send out to a receiver. And then you can plug their wiring harness into that receiver uh, to, get, uh, to, get, uh, to be able to adjust whatever you configure it. So we're going to go kind of go into that a little bit. So it sounds clear as mud, I know. First thing we'll do is capture mode. I'm not going to go through all of these. Uh, they're kind of self-explanatory. Um, you know about what it is and, and what it's doing I'll just kind of scan down here uh, and you'll kind of see that now the one thing I will point out and I had a question is when I first took a picture a regular vi visible EO picture um, I, I was kind of you know it didn't quite have the quality that I thought of in fact it seemed kind of low quality so I asked Fleer and here's a little tidbit if you take in you um, if it's on radio metric JPEG it's it's going to be your 640 uh, by 512 resolution that's uh, you know it even if you take your visible it takes a lower resolution I don't really know why that is but it is if you want to take a, a good picture I think it's a 4,000 by 3,000 pixel resolution you put it on the 8-bit JPEG and a 14-bit TIFF so um, and I took some of those last night and they turned out really well all right but anyway so this this is uh, this is uh, all your all your basic settings on your capture, very nicely laid out on your controller. This is where you can get in, and for every mission, uh, you can tune what the, your buttons on your controller do. So you, again, you have three channels, and on those three channels, uh, you know you, you might have a something that you want for um, changing your uh, color palette or something to that effect, right? So. You can take in, th these can either be Mavlink or, or PWM, and then uh, function one. Let's see, there's your different options there. Cord mode, snap, touch, chain, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see everything that you can set in there. Um, and of course you have the, the different states. So this, you have three states, so it's a, it'd be a three position switch, and then you would configure what each position the switch does. So. If you're familiar with that stuff, it's it's pretty simple. But the nice thing about that is, you can actually configure this for each and every mission that you're going to fly. Um, so if you, it's not just stuck in one state. Uh, those same three buttons can do a whole multitude of things. All right. I think this is the thing that everybody's been kind of wondering about, and I, hopefully that clears it up. Um, but that allows you to remote control it um, without without having to use Bluetooth or anything else. It can be all via the the a, a controller RF controller then the last page up here is just kind of your simple um, I guess you call that your general settings uh, you know you have your your Bluetooth power and and all that kind of stuff and of course then you have all your firmware versions and, and all that kind of stuff that you'd expect so that's kind of I'd call that your general settings but this controller page is the one I think everybody wanted to know how that works. Um, hopefully, I don't have to go into each each one. This just looking at this is kind of self-explanatory, um, and hopefully that clears it up. So you can assign those things to each and every button. And then again, I think a lot of people are kind of wondering what all you can do here. So 
Um, you know, even if you didn't have the controller right here, if you were doing specific missions, uh, you could pre-configure it, uh, everything in here as you need to, and then go send it off and, and fly it. But um, personally, I want to be able to have those controllers, so I'm working on that. Um, but I don't like to have to tow the whole secondary controller with me. So I'm going to work on some good solutions for that. I'm going to work with uh, Ralph at Fly High USA and see what we can come up with for everyone that uh, wants to use one of these. So anyway, uh, so far, really think this is a good unit. It's, uh, it is uh, very much a, a thorough and, and polished unit. Um, it's everything on it works. I have found very few, uh, really no issues with it. Uh, and uh, it's just, uh, the, I guess you'd say the biggest challenge is just finding the integration solution that you want. I think that's kind of uh, up to us in the industry to help create those solutions. So anyway, hope this was informative. Um, hopefully this kind of clears things up for what everybody was curious about. And see you next time.